morning dear friends and welcome to this 12th week in ordinary time this mass is going to be offered for all of you i'm going to be praying specifically for your families today pray for your dads on this father's day pray for those fathers who have passed that god may grant them rest and if yours has passed like mine may god give them rest in his presence we pray too for all those whose fathers are still living and alive, that God may bless them with many more years to spend with their children, their grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren. I pray for all those mothers who have to live without their husbands at this time. Pray for God to bring them comfort and grace and strength. And I pray for all children who have to grow up without their fathers, that an angel may watch over them and that God may keep them safe every day. I'll also pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. Pray especially for those who are sick. Pray for those whose families are in turmoil or in some turbulent space. Pray for those whose businesses are on the decline. Pray for those who are seeking employment. Pray for those who have become jobless as a result of this coronavirus and we pray especially on this father's day that god may reveal himself to us as father and may help us fix our walls tensions crisis conflicts and battles that as a mighty champion he may step up for all of his children let us go to god and let us ask for god's blessings on everyone by opening him today will be Lord you have come to the seashore Lord you have come to the seashore Lord you have come to the seashore neither searching for the rich nor the wise Desiring only that I should follow. O Lord, with your eyes set upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for. I have found by the water at your side. I will seek all the shores. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to worship God and to be acceptable in His presence, let us confess our sins. Let us ask His mercy and forgiveness that He may cleanse us and make us fit for His presence. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the glory. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. 
with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trampled. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you will test the just, who probe mind and heart. Let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my curse. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power. Of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult and shame. I have become an outcast to my brothers a stranger to my children because zeal for your house consumes me and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn towards me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See how lowly ones, see you, see you lowly ones, and be glad. You will seek God. May your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor and his own who are in bonds, he spawns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world and through sin death and thus death came to all people in as much as all sins so for up to the time of the law sin was in the world though sin is not accounted when there is no law but death reigned from adam to moses even over those who did not sin, after the pardon of the trespass of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God, the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, 
overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord. And you also will testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, for all those who are fathers like me, and for all those who are willing to become fathers, I'd like to wish all of you a very happy Father's Day. And for your fathers, for those whose fathers like mine have also passed, I'd like to wish them a happy Father's Day up on the other side. And I pray that their memories will be your blessing every day. On this Father's Day, I will like to reflect with you from the readings. If you hear these readings, they seem to capture the kind of thing a dad would normally tell their child. It's almost like wise counsel from a father on a very special occasion to their child preparing them on how to face a dangerous and uncertain and sometimes inhospitable world. That's what you hear from the first reading. That's what you hear from the second reading, from the response to the psalm. That's what you hear from the gospel reading. It is God speaking to us, his children, who in the face of the monstrous events of our lives are prone to fear, anxiety, depression, are, are prone to anger, complaining, and sometimes total withdrawal or isolation from others and from the world. We, we give up, we quit, we become helpless and feel hopeless, we get desperate, and sometimes lost. And on this Father's Day, God chooses to speak like a father again to you. This, the last several months, have been very hard. Not just here in our country, but around the world. I don't know any family that has not been touched by the impact of the last several months. 
I don't know anyone who is still untouched by the effect of all of this. There are so many of us who are living and thinking what tomorrow brings, what tomorrow holds, what life will be like if we will be here at all. That can create anxiety and fear. That can demotivate, immobilize, and sometimes desensitize us from what we are capable of being. And so today, God who created you and infused in you and in me all the pressure and tension enduring and absorbing virus who knows what we are capable of who knows what we can reach up for who knows that as the psalmist call says of us that we are gods even though we find it hot to see ourselves that way as children of god we are gods that's how powerful our engine is created by the Almighty God. You have a powerful engine. And your engine can endure the unimaginable, can endure anything and everything. And so I'd like us to go back to what the first reading says. On this Father's Day, God speaks to you as your Father. And He wants you to take this. Just, just remember the, the last time or the first time your dad spoke to you about life and how he tried to encourage you and how he tried to make you believe in yourself and think about how that helped you and how that still helps you today. God said, this is what Jeremiah is complaining to God. He says he hears whispers of his enemies plotting his downfall plotting to stall his dreams and his life and his vision and his mission jeremiah knows he does not have everything within him to deal with all that is coming against him now sometimes it's not just someone that is against you Sometimes it is the times like we have right now. These are the perilous times and we are impacted by them. No one is working against you directly. Yeah, the times are just inconvenient. The times are just uncertain and the times are proving to be dangerously impactful. And so God is not just protecting me or protecting you from somebody. He is promising to protect us from moments like this, events that we can control, things that are not in our power, things that are outside our lane, but affect us or impact on us nonetheless. And so Jeremiah knows this. And he says, all those who were my friends are now on the other side, walking against me, watching for a misstep of mine, Maybe that's also true for you. I don't know. We are uh, people you once believed in. People you thought would be there for you when things went south. Now have abandoned you. And are watching on the wings to see what happens to you. Is to see your end. To see your demise. Maybe that's true. It does happen. It's factual. You can relate to this maybe. Or maybe it's just the fact that your business, your investments, and everything you once worked for is taking a dive as a result of the pressure from the coronavirus and the impact on our economy. It's possible that you just graduated and you had plans for this year after your graduation and the company that once offered to employ you is now in dire straits. You're not sure what things would be like. Maybe you had seen the darling of your life and hoped that by this time you will be getting married 
I'm starting up a life and moving to some great city somewhere. And that too is on hold. Maybe you had other plans and all of those have to wait right now. And not just have to wait as though you know if they will ever come to be. You're just not sure what is going to happen. Jeremiah says this of us and to us. But the Lord is with me. Okay. Now, at least that should make me feel, wow, okay, so I'm not alone in all of this. All right. So he says, see all of these things, all of my plans, everything seemed to be sliding off away from me. I'm not going to fear. Because in the words of the Apostle Paul, we don't live by sight, we live by faith. Yes, by sight, I see everything sliding away from me. I see me losing control. I see everything working out against me. But by faith, I see how God is going to put all of those things in place, line them up all for me and for my good. As scripture says, says God, for all those who love God, everything works together unto good. For all those who trust God, everything falls together for their good. That's not what I said. That's what God said. Jeremiah understood that. Even though. And he says. But the Lord is with me. Like a mighty champion. The Lord is with me. So Jeremiah sees all of this. And doesn't look to himself. Because he realizes there's nothing in here. To face and to deal with all of this. But I do have an engine. That can survive this. But I need someone. I need to be connected. To be aligned with someone. Who would be the master and the driver of this engine to deal and to handle with all of this? So he reaches out and he says, But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. So he reaches out to God and he it's almost like downloads or brings down the authority and the power of his God to handle everything lined up against him. He says but the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. And because of that, he says, all those coming against me will stumble. Now, it's not me stumbling any longer. Even though they had set up all of this and all of these issues have set for me to stumble. Jeremiah says, now it's no longer me stumbling. The Lord, the mighty champion, has just put confusion in everything else that was coming against you and against me. And now it's no longer me stumbling in the dark. It is everything else stumbling before me. And tumbling. Since they will not triumph. So whatever it is that you're struggling right now and you're fearful right now, will not triumph, will not win. Says in their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting and unforgettable confusion. You may not see how the confusion begins to, to, to take place. How the confusion begins, all right, and how they begin to collapse and to tumble. You may not see that yet, but that should not even make you afraid. You, you may see that you're getting closer to this problem. That shouldn't make you fearful because fear stops your ability to think and to act reasonably and rationally. We must not fear says O Lord of hosts you who test the just who probe mine on heart let me witness so Gemma says let me be able to see that this is going to, for, going to come to pass that everything that is standing up against you against me and against us every one of us that we will witness every one of them for before us we will stand triumphant not because of anything but because of who God is in us that's I'm sure how your dad spoke to you when you began to grow up telling you yes this is a difficult world this is a dangerous world but you are prepared I'm doing everything to prepare you to face this world and to be a winner in this world and to be victorious in this world and God is reminding you again today on this Father's Day. And see what the psalmist said. Lord, in your great love, answer me. 
in your great love. Answer me. For your sake I bear insults, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brother. Yes, I feel alone. But answer me. And he will. He will answer me. And this is his answer. We see that answer in the gospel. Jesus reaffirms what Jeremiah was speaking of. Jeremiah was thinking about it. Now God is answering. He says, fear not. Fear not. Don't act out of fear. Don't live from fear. Don't operate from fear. Don't think from fear. Don't sleep in fear. Don't walk in fear. Don't act in fear. Fear not. So, so whatever you're doing right now, don't do it in fear. That's what scripture is saying to us. Now fear is real. It's an admission that something comes against me that would overwhelm me, that would overpower me. Something that I have no resources to handle and to deal with. That's why I fear. But the one who holds my life in his hands, the one who holds your life in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He says, fear not. For nothing concealed that will not be revealed. Do you understand that? Now, as, as military persons, we understand the power of intelligence. When I have intelligence of my enemy in full, in full, full view before me, I don't fear them. Because I know their strength. I know everything that they, they're coming against me with. And I know how to handle that. I have no fear. So the Lord says, I will provide you intelligence that you need to handle every one of these situations. And everything that is now appearing hidden, unknown, scary, will be made clear to you. I will provide you the clarity of intelligence about everything that lines itself before you right now. So he says, fear not. Nothing that is concealed right now will stay that way. He will reveal everything. No secret will remain that way. They will all be made known. Wow. And you will be the repository of all of that. That means you will be the po the, in, in position of that vast array of information and knowledge to handle and to deal with everything that comes against you. And the Lord goes on. He says, do not even be afraid of those who can kill the body. Whether it's this virus, whether it doesn't matter what it is. He says, do not be afraid of any of this. Nothing. Nothing. Not sickness, not poverty, nothing. Nothing. Not someone with a, with a, with a, with a barreling around with a gun. Nothing. He says, do not be afraid of anything. Instead, fear me, God, because I have power and authority over everything else. So, if you are going to be fearful for anything, I should be the one to fear. Nothing else. Nothing else. And then he tells me how worthy I am and how worthy you are. He says, are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground, escaping your father's notice. That means, because there are times when we think, maybe God doesn't even care about me. Maybe he doesn't listen to me any longer. Yeah, at that time I feel that way. That maybe he's too busy with all these other people that matter to him, who are homo saintly, more, more holy, or who, who have done and achieved more to him. Those he is prouder of than myself. But he tells me today, that I am so valuable that nothing happening to me right now has escaped his gaze. He knows it. He's seen it. He's working on it. He's doing something about it. And he says, even every hair, I don't even know the number of hair I have on my head. I know I do cut my hair from time to time. But I have no idea. And I'm sure you have no idea the number of hair you have on your head. I don't know if anyone has. Wow. But it takes real devotion to be able to see and to understand every thread on my head. God says, even all the hairs of your head are counted. I have a number. Wow. So, 
Do not be afraid. You are worth more than you know. You are worth more than you know. My dear friends, on, on this Father's Day, I, I hope we can go back and just spend time and just listen to God speak to us as we face this very uncertain, this very dangerous, this very perilous and sometimes frightening moments and times and experiences in our daily lives. Whether it's your marriage going down south or whether it's your health or your business or anything else that you can understand and trust that God is Father, that He cares about you and that everything that is happening to you right now, He knows. And is preparing intelligence for you to help you handle and deal with everything that happens. The Alleluia verse captured something powerfully. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord. And you too will testify. You too will tell of the marvels of God in your life. And I pray that you will live to tell the story of God. To sing the praises of God. As scripture tells us in the first reading. Jeremiah says. It says. Praise the Lord. For he has rescued the life of the poor. Sing praise to the Lord. I hope you will have the opportunity. That you will live. To tell of the mighty deeds God will do. In your life. As always I like to end my reflections. By reminding you that you are the delight of the almighty God. And that God loves you very much. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord listens to the needy, he is always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask. We have only to reach out. So let us now seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the smallest sparrow. For the church, which dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace, that through our Holy Father, the Pope, our bishops, our priests, our deacons, our religious men and women, that God may continue to inspire and lead God's and lead His people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations enslaved by sinful systems of oppression and terror, pray especially for the racial tensions in our own country here, and around the world that God may help us recognize our brotherhood and sisterhood we share and that we may walk and we may walk towards each other and treat each, treat each other with dignity with respect and absolute uniqueness we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for men and women who are tormented by fear and worry especially those who are right now obsessed with fear for the future, fear for some plan that may never be anymore, fear for something they have no control over. That the promises of God 
will ease our anxieties, free us from our fears, inspire our faith and our trust and our confidence that God will show up for us as he has promised. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women, discerning the call to the priesthood or the religious life, especially at this time where the church has lost a lot of his illustrious servants to coronavirus, that the Holy Spirit may speak to your hearts, that you may calmly receive this calling and surrender as ministers of God's church. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our fathers on this Father's Day, we pray especially for all our fathers who may have passed. We ask that God may grant them rest and peace. We pray for those who are living, that God may protect them and give them many more years to spend with their children and their grandchildren. For expecting fathers, that God may grant them the joy of being parents. For those who have just lost their own fathers in the last few months, that God may comfort their loss, that God may heal their pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have come into the presence of our Father with special intentions, for those who celebrate their birthdays, their anniversaries, or other events that are important to them, that God may grant you the joy and the fullness, the fulfillment and the contentment in life, that he may grant you many more opportunities to celebrate again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us enlist the help of our Blessed Mother as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Let us pray. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us in our need by giving us your own Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise. Receive, O Lord, our prayers for fathers and for daddies everywhere, and grant that cleansed by its actions, we may make offerings of a heart pleasing to you here and forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare our glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember that and fathers who have died, O oh God. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and envy in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And from me to all of you and your loved ones, peace of God, rest and abide, now and always. Amen. And to every dad out there, happy Father's Day. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have 
Santa Spis. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed. For all those who are still unable to attend Mass and participate in the body and blood of Christ, we pray for spiritual communion. Most merciful, ever gracious and compassionate God, Every day you manifest yourself to your people in so many ways. On this Father's Day, we ask, O oh God, with a Father's love and a Father's heart, that you may manifest yourself to them in this Eucharist. That they may participate spiritually in the benefits of this sacrament, O oh God. That their life may be nourished to overcome every fear, every anxiety, and every challenge that the world throws at them. These are the favors we have asked, and we are confident you will grant to your children because we ask in the powerful name of Jesus. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O God, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the wings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to wish every father out there, your fathers, your grandfathers, your godfathers, your stepfathers, your spiritual fathers, and everyone who fulfills that role in your life, I'd like to wish every one of them a very happy, happy, and blessed Father's Day. For our closing hymn today, we will sing Abba Father, Abba Father. If you forget everything I said, please remember this, that you are still the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother and Saint Joseph, the patron of all fathers, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh, oh.
Jesus, your son. Of Jesus, your son. Father, may we be one in you. May we be one in you. As he is in you. And you are in him. Glory, glory and praise to thee, glory and praise to thee, forever, amen, forever, amen, forever, amen.